We don't have a new Netflix recommendation for you, but if you must, Science Dealer is out and it's something. This is the Podcast Daily. It's Wednesday. That's Bill Landis and Jeremy Birmingham. I am Austin Ward. We have watched Ohio State was brought up a lot. Shoehorned in uh, in a ways that didn't always make a lot of sense, but I guess if you're trying to defend Connor Stallions, that's probably what you would do. Uh, but Berm and I did watch on Tuesday as soon as it came out. Bill Landis has not watched it yet, but he has certainly been involved from the beginning and watching this rivalry. You were and involved? The, no, he's wa- involved in watching. I have a confession watching. to make. I was, I was the guy on the sideline at Central. <laughs> Are you uh, Bro Ohio? What? <laughs> bro Ohio. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Kudos Maybe. to that hero. I, I mean, I'm going to be very clear. Well done. Are we sure it was the it was the guy they didn't just make up somebody? I know I, that that entity exists on the internet. I I don't know. I mean, I've read the "Ask Me Anything" thread that he has on Eleven Warriors, or like that he pu- was written on Tuesday morning, which was uh-huh. I'm in the documentary. Okay. Go ahead and ask me anything. Okay. And it seems pretty legit that he was at least the guy they were talking to. Okay, you just he, can't put it past those Hollywood types that no. you know throw an actor out there and claim it's somebody no. else. Probably AI. Yeah. Well, it, it probably it, not even a real person. It did seem like they took some liberties with some parts of this story. Uh, and that's what we want to talk about. Like, like leaving out that Connor Stallions was a, is a paid consultant for the Baltimore Ravens as well during that process. There are a lot of things that were missing, which was the point. So like, I think I wanted to get, I wanted to have an open mind and I wanted to watch it. I don't want to have a, I, I know what the Ohio state perception of it is. I also have a brain and I can apply some common sense to what seemed to be going on in Ann Arbor as well. But He's presenting, Connor Staggins was presenting his side of the case for the first time. I wanted to watch it, wanted to get it. I'm not, I don't believe it is my main takeaway because there are so many things that were said that just were immediately contradicted either by Connor Staggins himself, his parents, or his uh, buddy from the Naval Academy or wherever he was from who um, would say, "Um, you know, here's the story. I was at the Nebraska game and they told me, hey, you should stop filming that. They might think that you're filming that sideline and you can't do that. And he was like, oh, cool. And then he would say, I never did that. That never even happened. Yeah. I mean, to me, there's obviously, number one, this isn't a documentary. So let's, that's not, I mean, it's documenting something that happened, I guess, but it's not a documentary in the traditional sense where like, the documentary filmmakers are out searching to discover it's not the an truth. Objective point of view, right? They're not out there trying to discover the truth here. Like they're like, okay, let's find a national media writer who went to Michigan in Nicole Auerbeck. <laughs> let's find uh, Dan Wetzel who lives in Ann Arbor. Let's find Isaiah Hull who covers Michigan for the USA Today, whatever their network. They pod. they also could have like edited out just for Isaiah's purpose when he says, "Connor, that's my boy." Yeah, I mean, it was a, it was a very. Very bizarre set of number. So this happened in what October, right? And Netflix yeah. was following around Connor Stallions at the national championship game with a camera. So like they wasted no time. And this is why ultimately I think the NCAA, who I believe generally is feckless and teethless in most cases, is probably getting really annoyed by the just blatant arrogance from the Michigan side on this entire thing, because it is like. The entire time. That was that was Burn biting his thumb. If you're listening on audio only. That's an old expression. So, but here's the other. Here's the other part. It's like when you're talking about that and like thumbing your nose or biting your thumb at the NCAA. The documentary crew has access to the NCAA investigation. It had to have come from Connor and the lawyers himself. They blurred out the people that were asking the questions from the NCAA side, but they showed footage, which is edited footage. It was not the entire interview. I don't think the NCAA really wants that. They have tried to not publicly comment on this case. They've had in some situations had to do that more than they normally would, Bill. But like they are showing the questions asked of Connor Stallions and what's ostensibly a key part of the NCA investigation, which is a interview with Connor Stallions. So I, I don't think they like that for one. But number two, they also show the, the point where he's asked, were you on the sideline for Central Michigan and Michigan State? And this person who has spent 80 minutes saying he's got a photographic memory and he's memorized thousands of signals and he knows every Michigan game that he's ever seen. And so he suddenly can't remember if he was on the sideline right. three months ago for Central Michigan and Michigan he State. Had re- he recalled the times when he went to Florida State games or UCLA games, like all the games he remembered growing, going to because he just loves college football. Mm. He, those were just those were passion projects. 
Uh, this time, though, nope, he, nope. It was when he was an assistant at Navy in 2014. His first time on the field, he discovered he could steal Ohio State signs. Oh. Like, and <laughs> come on, man. Like, it, it's just so disingenuous. And then you go through 83 minutes or however long this mockumentary is. And huh. at the end, he says, well, I mean, I'd do it again. I don't regret it. I'd do it again. And like, so you do this whole show of saying, I didn't do it. And then at the end, you're like, okay, I probably did it. And I would definitely do it again because who cares? And that's like the, cra- like we're, we're past the point of like, did he do it? Right. Like, like he, well, he apparently, yeah, right. the, so this like, isn't an, Netflix o- apparently. this isn't an OJ situation. Like oh, everyone, everyone knows. And he's not even tacitly, like I think openly admitting there's a part where they cut to Dave Portnoy which is right after they show Connor Stallions showing a picture of the the person, whoever it was, on the sideline wearing Central Michigan. The Connor Stallions like individual. And he says, I don't think that person even looks like me. And then Dave Portman goes, He told me he was there. <laughs> okay, cool. So what I don't understand the methodology of a documentary that would s- seem to undermine its narrator as being wholly unreliable by punctuating so- their documentary with well he's not the narrator he's the subject. he's the principal subject and i think i don't know the answer bill i i tried to i've tried to read as much about the filmmaker the process as much as i can i want to i want to be fair about it i and he said he wanted to view it through the prism of the ohio state michigan rivalry which is why we're still talking about it uh we don't cover michigan and i've never talked to connor stallions but this is the first time that he's talking about it publicly. And I don't, if that was the point, which is why there's a bunch of Ohio State stuff that's shoehorned in that just feels like, you know, conspiracy theory, tinfoil hat Michigan stuff, which is also like regularly spouted off by Rich Eisen throughout this entire uh, project as well, which I thought was strange. Like Dave Portnoy, like that's different. He's openly a Michigan fan. Rich Eisen is like talking about and not it on his and is talking about it on his show. It's so, like, like, I understand that they're separate, but anyway, um, if that was the goal, like I don't think that they did did that berm. I no, don't. they didn't bring up the the LLCs that he had with Blake Corum, of course. Yeah, no vacuum stuff. There's nothing about the vacuum. <laughs> I don't watch it. Um, there, there's very little in there to try and make it. If the idea is to try to promote this idea that Connor Science acted alone, I, I don't think that was expressed at all. Well, like, and it was. I mean, he was given a game ball by Jim Harbaugh in following Michigan's win at Iowa in 2022, a place they hadn't won in like 20 years, and he got a game ball for being excellent at sign stealing. Like, I don't, I, I, I'm sorry, to the idea that Jim Harbaugh didn't know what was going on, especially in light of the fact that, again, reportedly he was being paid by the Ravens for consulting for the same stuff. Uh, that seems improbable. Uh, yeah. There's just, to get, national media members like Nicole Auerbach or, or Dan Wetzel to go on there and say like, well, everyone does it, so who cares? Like that is insane to me and I can't imagine why that would be, why, why people would do that because it's just not true. Um, but, but it is true that everyone steals signs. Not in that way. But the sign is an elaborate right, but that, that's the whole. But that's what yeah. was, that's what is being apparently corroborated by uh, Wetzel, especially in this show. He was like, well, I mean. Dan Wetzel, by the way, is on Kings of the North this yeah, week. Yeah, I'm not trying to call up. He's on the show, so it's just, it's front of mind. But like, to sit there and say, well, other teams are doing this is just not true. So, I don't know. I think the, like, the, the, I, again, I haven't watched it. The Lone Wolf stuff doesn't hold any water because of the response to even like the stuff that we know is real like the right. notice of allegations that came out on monday and the reporting from that is like well connor stallions is going to fight it and michigan as an entity is going to fight it but like denard robinson and jesse minter are negotiating yeah. punishments and it's like well if they had nothing to do neither with it, one why, of those two were mentioned in why the, would they do it right neither so, was chris partridge there yeah. was like a, pa- a newspaper clipping. they showed one clip of like oh chris partridge was fired but they never mentioned him by name they never talked about any of the rest of the staff other than jim harbaugh then the, not even a mention of his relationship with Jay Harbaugh that like st- really started the whole thing. No, no, Venny, no Venmo receipts. Uh, they talked a little bit. They about did do Venmo the Venmo stuff. receipts. Okay. They show that, which is like, I just watch which it. you will, <laughs> you will. Uh, I mean, I, and I did say you didn't have to weigh in on it, but it, it, you certainly know all the key components of it. You don't have to review the uh, cinematic stylings of this, but which was well done, by the way. Very. They, they mean, had people. Production on, quality is great. They had people on there that were talking about Connor Stallings, which like they undermine a lot of his own arguments, which I thought was interesting, the filmmaker did, which is like, 
this guy's supposed to be a genius and like you, you learn all this espionage and like you have great discipline going through the Naval Academy. And then you had this moron posting publicly his Venmo receipts <laughs> about to a Michigan recruiting intern to go to the Ohio State Georgia game. It's like, how dumb can you be? Like you're some genius, but not really covering your tracks. And then also doing what appears to be a lot of the stuff, as Byrne mentioned, they started following him or someone was following him, a camera crew. I don't know if it was the Netflix people or or this specific documentary assume, filmmaker. Assume like pretty high quality I video. assume that it was. I don't know that for sure. Like an immediate attempt to cash in and then also to fall on the sword for everyone else, which is why I think there are no other coaches mentioned. And certainly they weren't going to participate and they, they could not participate not because to. of the ongoing investigation, which is makes it even stranger to me. The timing, because... This could have waited until the res like they they tack on at the very end. It's like August August twenty fifth, uh, Michigan received a notice of allegations. That was that was two yesterday, yeah. like two days ago for the podcast daily, which when we're in here Wednesday, I'll keep track of my days. But like, why did you why did you just let this play out? Like, was it that necessary? Especially if you're trying to fight it, like. And I don't even know why he. What's what's he fighting? Because he wants to get a job Could, in college football. No, because, well, that's what it says. He the, the, the NCAA is pushing for a three year penalty for him to be not. Yeah, he uh, should be banned for life from college that, football. That he plans I can't on, believe he's coaching high school football. He plans on fighting. Well, that's also apparently a debate right now, right? Isn't it? Like, well, the, no, he, he was, was he was hired he and was, then fired at one place, and they got hired at another nice. place. I, I think. Okay, here's the deal. When you do a whole story, and it's supposed to be about the untold story of Connor Stallions and this sign stealing operation number one everything that was in the documentary was told before there was nothing that was like except for <laughs> except for the day just Bowl. not from him yeah and when ryan day and ohio state are mentioned more than jim harbaugh i think you're doing a horrible disservice to people who are watching the show that. because it, it seems to me like you created an entire mockumentary with the express purpose of misleading the audience the entire time i, I think yeah I don't, these untold things, like they continue to just try to make heroes of the bad guys in these stories. Well, they're getting worse. Cause you, I don't know why. Cause last week you and I watched the Steve McNair one and it was like, we got to the end. It was like, did, they didn't accomplish anything in right. here. What, so, what are they doing? Yeah. They're just telling. Um, which, and I do, I, I'm, is this the same people that did the Florida one? Yeah. yeah. And I'm not, I say, why, why the timing? Well, clearly it's because Connor Steins wants to have a job and he gave them a, a level of access that didn't exist to anybody else. Like. I understand from his perspective why he would want to do that. And I also like appreciate the fact that he is publicly on the record. A lot of this stuff. Now he's in my opinion, clearly lying about most of the things that he says. Um, but, yeah, but at least he's lying publicly, but I think that yeah. I think it sheds a light on the investigation and the potential for penalties and what Michigan was doing over several years that informs a, a great deal about not just that program, but what's been going on in the rivalry. That's that's why we're talking about here, like on a Wednesday ahead of the season opener. It's like, well, this is a pointless conversation. Well, the, the fact that Ohio State was brought up so often in it makes it relevant to me. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Ryan Day ha was asked about it on Tuesday. I know that there were people in the Woody Hayes Athletic Center. They were saying that they refused to watch it uh, when it came out on Tuesday, but it still impacts their life. They're trying to focus on Akron on Saturday. And the fact, I'm hoping that the ludicrous nature of Connor Stallion's comments, the fact that the notice of allegation is, is out and the clear contradictory evidence that Connor Stallion's himself presented makes it clear how, how deep it went and that we yeah. can move on and that the NCA also, because this goes into their public record as well, is able to look at this and objectively say it was a program problem and the program is going to need to pay the price for that. Yeah, I think, again, not having watched it, that, that feels like a, a reasonable takeaway. Like, if Connor Stallions is on a 90-minute or whatever documentary just clearly lying about the entire situation, and it just becomes more and more implausible that no one else knew what was going on, right? So I, I actually, in an effort to separate Michigan from Connor Stallions, it, it seems like perhaps more harm will good no, them. Because the entire... Right? show was about how much Connor Stallions loved Michigan and how he would do anything for Michigan to win. Mm -hmm. Like the very end, he says, well, I do it all again because at the end, you know, I got to watch them win a national championship. Like it, it, it's basically saying, yeah. who cares? I did it all and it's worth it. So I don't know. I, I think that there are 
a lot of reasons that the NCAA is going to be able to point to Michigan and say, this is exactly what you did, but this this documentary did not help Michigan. I don't know how it could. Now, it did humanize Connor Steins a little bit, I thought. You know, as a, as a person who grew up, like, as a huge fan of a, of a program, like, I think most people can identify with that sort of uh, insanity uh, to the lengths that you'd go. And, you know, but there's also a line. And in the video, he said, in the movie, he said, I, I didn't cross the line. I just live in the gray area. <laughs> Like, uh, cool, man. I mean, you did. You know, you're all right, all right, all right. I I don't (laughs) recall. He admitted that people that he gave tickets to sent him videos of games. And why did they do that? Oh, I don't know. They just did. I don't recall. The kindness of their hearts. Because that's a very normal thing that people do when they go to watch a college football game. They just sit in their seat and video the opposing sideline. I do that all the time when I go to games. I think that's the that's the part that left the uh, I don't know, strongest impression with me is the hypocrisy of it that on one hand, you're going to say that you remember every single signal that you've ever seen on a sideline and you can decipher it immediately. And then pretending like you have no memory of a game that happened a month before when you were on a sideline, uh, apparently, allegedly, you know, uh, in disguise, like was the mustache real? Uh, Did he have a mustache? No, he had just not shaved for a week or so. Oh, it was, it was a goat. Yeah. It was. And, uh, I don't, I don't think it was real. It was pretty thick. It looks pretty thick and like kind of dark, and like he just doesn't he doesn't have any hair otherwise. I think I it was. I've seen video in the last few days where he was actually in the year of Central Michigan coaches during that game, like giving yeah. them the same instruction. That oh he, yeah, he was like he like leans right. over. Right, so like, so, yeah. uh, there's no allegedly. Uh, I, you know, uh, we all know it was him. I'm just trying to protect the podcast. But like, bless you. Ah, there you did it. It was a day later, folks, and he finally <laughs> sneezed. We got it out of it. But enough. that happened anyway. That happened multiple times where I I do applaud the filmmakers for that because they could have they could have left that part out and be like, this is what Connor Stein said here. But the parts that contradicted that, whether that came from him, whether that came from his buddy, whether that came from his parents, uh, I, I do appreciate that because it it underscored something that I think is very believable and is going to be relevant when it comes to the penalties, which is that this is not a credible person. And there was something to hide. What was the point? You were like, uh, he was sitting in his car and his cheeks turned red. Oh, it was when he said, I first, he said, number one, I've never done any in-person scouting. So oh. that's not against me. Yeah. Well, he was lying right off the bat. Right, number right one. away. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, there's no mention of the money trail where, who's paying for it. I mean, there was a brief mention, I guess, of Uncle of, T, of Uncle T, whoever that is. Oh, I forgot about Uncle T. Um, <laughs> but like, again, a documentary is designed to dig to the roots of these things and actually get to the truth. And there was no interest in actually showing the truth of this situation. The, the I think it, I actually, I disagree with that. I think it did it, that it showed that Michigan is engaged pretty significantly in a cover up through Connor Stallions and that they, their public well, comments is, are yeah, not I mean, believable. Yeah, that is the truth. I mean, I don't think that was their goal. Yeah, but, I don't think they meant to present it in that way. Yeah, I, again, right, I, there fair. were more mentions of Ryan Day in Ohio State than there were, and more video clips of Ohio Stadium for some random reason. That's the, true. The entire thing starts with a picture of of High Street for some reason. Like, it, it, to try to turn this into an Ohio State did this to us thing, which is the repeated mantra throughout the entire, th- is insane. Like, it's bonkers behavior. Thankfully, someone from the Washington Post is like, uh, who cares <laughs> yeah. who turned them in, which is the bottom line. Like, I, I don't. Well, that, that has been and that to to bring it to its conclusion there when they show the NCAA investigation, it is so awkward. And this is the part that I think. So the filmmakers are trying to put it in that Ohio State, Michigan, in terms of the rivalry. This part, I think, should have been removed. Uh, just because it's going to fuel purely the Michigan conspiracy theory that ex- has existed for 11 months now, which is Connor Stallion's lawyer, after he avoids trying to say, he can't remember if he was a, at the Central Michigan game, the, his other lawyer says, we were only supposed to be on here until noon, I'm going to have to end this interview, but I think shame on you, NCAA, you've not looked at who was accessing Connor Stallion's uh, computer. Like this, that's what's really the problem here, and why aren't you doing that? And I think... I, I guess I can understand the, the difficult decision. Like it wasn't part of the actual NCA investigation. And so it, it should have been removed. But I do think that it goes back to the point that like the filmmaker is showing how ludicrous it is 
that Michigan and Connor Stallions are blaming Ohio State for everything that happened to them subsequently. Like it, that doesn't make any sense. You did uh, it. Yeah. What's like what what's the what's the argument you can make that that is that, even believable? The argument that they're that they're actually making, which is one that they I don't think that they're attempting to make, is that Ohio State caused all this. By, by beating what, them so by bad? By beating them so bad. Oh. That oh. is Ohio State is what caused this to mm. happen in Ann Arbor. Don't okay. Don't don't confuse that which get, portion of, of the program they're responsible for. Yeah. I get that part. Right. I don't think that they understand that that's like the the defenders of this scheme are trying to place oh, Ohio State is the reason that we got caught. Which who cares? I, even it's I don't think it's true. I don't care if it is. See, like Rutgers, Penn State, and Purdue were pretty pissed off right. about it too, right? The problem is Ohio Same State did year. cause this, and, and all you have to do is go back to the beginning of this documentary and understand. Oh, I hate Ohio State. I'll do whatever it takes to beat Ohio State, and go back to twenty twenty one in, in the. February or June or whatever we had beat the media days and Jim Harbaugh saying I'm going to beat them or die trying like these things are not coincidence it all happened we all know it happened and it's fine we your program's going to get a little slap on the wrist for a l- couple of years a little yeah a little they're not gonna they're not gonna shutter them they're gonna lose some scholarships they're gonna probably gonna have to lose some games that they won which who cares I mean I, I care they should be forfeited not vacated let's be clear um but you know they're not going to have their national championship taken away. That's that's a totally different entity. So you know, lose some scholarships, lose some games. Coaches get suspended. You still want a national they, championship? They'll get to call you cheaters for the rest. Still won a national championship, and the Michigan fan base will always be able to say we won, and everyone else will say yeah, but, and they're going to say yeah, but we don't care. Yep. Mm. Okay. Well, if you don't want to watch it, I completely understand. But we wanted to. Uh, it's been a big big part of our lives. Mm. Connor is very important to all of us. Yep. Uh, it's that's my boy provided a lot of a lot of content and a lot of things certainly to talk about certainly in the Woody Hayes Athletic Center but I, hopefully this means we can bring that chapter to a close. Uh, I think they tried pretty desperately if they could have attached and pinned this on Ohio State somehow that they had hacked into their practice footage or use private investigative firms that were directly being funded from the Woody Hayes Athletic Center or a location, address based in Columbus, I think the filmmakers would have done that. If you get caught cheating on your spouse, you don't get to be mad at the person who told your spouse. Mm. You know, it's your fault, dude. You're the one banging someone else. (laughs) That's well said. This is a update edition of the podcast. It sure is. Again, if you're wondering, hey, shouldn't we be just talking about Ohio State and Akron? Yeah, I do kind of agree with that. Maybe but you will be doing that. Maybe tonight. we should have, but we're going to be back in here. We're going to, ha- Bill and I are going to have some snap judgments after uh, Ryan Day's lightning round. And I'm not sure who else is going to be talking for the Buckeyes, but we'll get that and we'll have uh, a couple more episodes of the podcast daily. Bill will be on Kings of the North at noon, I think. Noon on Wednesday, noon on Thursday. We're previewing every game in the North on Thursday. Okay. And maybe, maybe, uh, We'll see what happens with like Colorado and North Dakota State on Thursday night. We might have something to say about that if that goes a certain way, which will be fun for everybody if it goes that way. Right? I think it's going to be fun no matter which way it goes because it's football season. That is true. And we love football. We do. We do. And which we will is be t- why we hate to see the game sullied in such a nefarious way. And the great news is there is a game coming on Saturday. So we will turn our attention back to that in Ohio State and Akron, 3.30 on Saturday with every other show for the rest of this week. I promise you. We won't have any more mentions of Connor Stallions and all of the cheating that was clearly being admitted to on stealing signals. It was right there in the name. I think it was called Sign Stealer. Sign Stealer. Dang it. My apologies. Cut. It's right in there. No, we're done anyway. That's Bill Landis and Jeremy Birmingham. I'm Austin Ward. Thanks for joining us on the Podcast Daily. We'll talk to you later.